So my name is Jane Rennison and I'm one of the consultants who works for the Implementing Recovery Through Organisational Change, IMROC organisation, based in the UK. And I've been invited over to Western Australia to present findings and our experiences from setting up recovery colleges um, across the world. I think generally we can agree that the World Health Organisation uh, definition um, around the importance of recovery is shared by most nations in fact, which is about being putting the individual at the centre and supporting them to gain and regain skills, knowledge, a sense of identity. So I think we all share that. We believe that Recovery College can create conditions to help people flourish um, in all of that in terms of their, their personal recovery journey and that actually it creates a great space um, for, for exploration both with consumers, providers, carers, supporters um, and the work that we've done in, in recent years and I'll, I'll cover this a little bit more later is Recovery colleges internationally are moving in a very similar direction and are finding the same things that are useful and that they're the things that I want to talk about. I've said what the main principles are um, and since those original principles which were defined you know back into kind of 2010 and 11 is the research still um, shows what that these key principles are so important and without question, if you had to even pare it down further, these are the four things that recovery colleges have to reflect recovery principles, and that's personal recovery principles, has to be founded on co-production, isn't peer-led, isn't led by services, is for everyone and operates on college principles, because that's what keeps us different and that's what keeps the whole thing really, really healthy. I did just want to kind of give a few examples really of what workshops and courses might be included. Um, generally, I would say that most recovery colleges internationally do split their courses into these areas roughly. I think, you know, you see in most prospectuses these groupings. So just to say in ours, so in, in understanding health difficulties, the sort of workshops that we would include there around understanding alcohol and drug use, and there's lots of understanding, so understanding anxiety, depression, hearing voices, psychosis, self-harm, personality disorder, mental health medication, hoarding. We've now moved a lot more as well into physical health, um, partly because our organisation works with community physical health services. But equally, there just is no mileage in keeping things really separate because most people with a, a long-term physical health condition also experience some level of emotional mental distress. And similarly, we know from many of our students that living with a mental health condition, they also experience physical issue, physical health issues. Um, most of our students are saying the sooner we start to talk about health instead of mental health or physical health, the better. Um, but it was their push um, for why we included well-being now in our recovery and well-being college because that's what it's about it's about well-being so we also have courses in this section around sickle cell chronic pain um, we're doing a lot of work with palliative care services because even though you might be dying of cancer you're still living with dying and hope opportunity and control matter just as much so we're really having to think a lot more creatively about the courses and workshops we offer people so in terms of the impact on the individual student, and this is primarily I'm thinking of consumers, is there's been some really interesting experiences of breaking down the them and us. And I think typically people think of the them and us being people who deliver services and people who receive services. Some of the interesting stuff that's happened is there is that breaking down of that barrier, but um, often in, I think in services, we hadn't quite realized that there was a hierarchy um, with, uh, within our consumer group about who, um, whose condition perhaps was more complex or more important um, and that opened up a lot of dialogue so you know uh, literally hearing in workshops what do you mean you've only got depression I have psychosis and this was a very interesting phenomenon to many of us in services um, delivering services we hadn't quite realized that that was going on so 
those it fits in with the stigma discussion actually and that can really be explored in recovery colleges there was also quite an issue between those who were using men typical mental health services and those who were using our um, addiction services there was a them and us between people who were um, coming and participating with a physical health condition and a mental health condition but of course a recovery college can just throw that all up in the air and can start naming some of that and talking about it which is really really important most of us when we wobble want to be able to self-write um, and get back on track without using services and students report that that's what a recovery college can do in terms of equipping them with skills and knowledge or even where to find different support rather than using services. Certainly there are reports around people increasing their sense of responsibility for managing their own condition and broader well-being um, and that's been borne out as well by um, by colleagues in, who work in services saying that they've no, noticed a marked difference in somebody's confidence in perhaps managing their own well-being. Definitely offers great opportunities to participate in communities and I think the general feedback tends to fall into three key areas which is in the UK voting rights, people actually being able to vote and inform what happens in their community on all sorts of levels. Getting a job has been incredibly important for people feeling um, that they're actively participating in their, their communities and simply getting a life is the quote um, that often happens in our recovery college. That's what it's helped me do, get a life. Western Australia has a huge opportunity to develop a recovery college model. Um, you have unique demographics and a geographical spread. Um, you also have an indigenous population where there will be opportunities to introduce new ways of working so that those living with a mental health condition, living with a, a physical health condition or indeed um, using alcohol and drug services will be able to better manage their conditions going forward.